So a good way of teaching you what stutter edit can do is by creating a series of different gestures. Starting off quite simple. So we're going to begin with a filter sweep, as most people probably know what a filter can do. If you don't, then let me just quickly show you with lives filter. So here's the effect and we get the whole frequency spectrum here and a frequency control, which allows us to cut out more and more of one end of the spectrum. So this is the default low pass or high cut filter, which cuts out more and more of the higher frequencies, as you can hear when I lower the frequency control. With a lower resonance like this, the effect is more subtle. And if I increase it, what happens, we get a boost around the cutoff frequency, which makes the effect a lot more obvious and colorful sounding. Um, you can often find that actually it's quite nice to have the resonance boosted when the frequency control is doing a lot. So when we're cutting out a lot of the upper frequencies, we might find we want a higher resonance at that point because obviously the signal gets quieter when you cut out frequencies and a higher resonance will account for that. Obviously, this is the kind of thing you can do in Stutter Edit because it allows you to change these two parameters over time. We're not going to go with a low pass filter, though. We're going to go with a high pass one instead. And a high pass works the other way, so it cuts out more and more of the low frequencies or bass. So let's get rid of this. And to work with this, what we're going to do is first load an empty bank. And in the preset manager now, we can see we don't have any presets in there. So to start working with a particular preset, we just need to press the key that we want the preset to be on. So let's go for C3. You can see it's selected the preset in the manager, and we can also see C3 up here as well. So now we're working on the note of C3. I can just select the effects that I want uh, to be turned on. First of all, I'll turn off stutter. We'll come back to that later. And I'll turn on a high pass filter. I'm going to keep it with the default uh, length and trigger settings. Again, we'll come on to these shortly. And to keep it nice and simple, I'm going to leave resonance for now. So um, I'm going to turn the resonance range down. As you can see, for each effect, once it's on, we have a series of parameters, frequency and resonance in this case. And then for each one of those parameters, we get a range set at the top here by uh, this blue and green line and points at either end, and then a curve setting below. Again, we'll leave that in default. And what I'll do is just set the frequency range to max. So we've got resonance sticking at the bottom here um, at a value of zero and a full range frequency. So now you can hear, if I play a note of C3, we'll get a filter sweep lasting for a bar. One thing you might want to do is to change the way uh, or the speed with which the uh, frequency value changes over time. So at the moment, it's in the default linear position. As you can see, this um, is right in the middle here, rather than to one side. If I double click it, it sets it back to the middle. So in it, when it's set to linear, the frequency value changes in a smooth fashion from one extreme to the other. You can see at the edge here, we've got different symbols, one representing an exponential sort of upwards curve and one a more uh, downwards one. So what this means is that rather than the value going smoothly from one point to the other, it changes quickly at first and then slows down or in the opposite extreme, it goes slowly at first and then speeds up. So if we're finding that it's a bit too slow or like lingers a bit too long in the low end and we want it to move a bit quicker up to this high frequency end, then all we have to do is move it in the opposite direction that you might than you might think towards this end here, which will actually speed it up so that it moves more drastic, more quickly over to this high end. Now it moves very sensitively, this control. So if I move it too much, you'll find it just jumps over there straight away. We just want to move it slightly 
and then you'll hear the different effect it'll have. So you can see, obviously, only having moved it a bit, it's already jumping quite quickly up to this upper frequency end. Let's maybe introduce a bit of resonance as well. Um, if you want to have a fixed resonance throughout, then rather than having to drag these to different points, what you can do is control or right click on this section and then choose lock at value. Then we don't get a range anymore. We just get a single value that we can set wherever we like. So we could set it to be a bit higher to make the filter effect more colorful. I think maybe I've made it a bit too drastic, so I'm just gonna move it a slightly closer to the center. And also I think I'll bring down the top so it doesn't go quite so high because it gets a bit ridiculous when it gets that high up. Let's try that. That's quite nice, but maybe I actually don't want to have a resonance amount when it's in the lower end here as it gets a bit too loud. But what I might do is have the resonance increasing in a similar way to the frequency. So I'm going to control click, unlock it by selecting here. So we get our range back and then I'm going to drag this amount down to the bottom and then have the resonance increasing as the frequency does. Again, you can't really hear the resonance effect as I've got it in linear. So what I might do is pull this one to the left as well to have the resonance jump up a bit quicker in the same way that the frequency is. <laughs> 